be Thursday. It will be opportunity to review everything or anything. Be guided by you. You come in with questions. Uh, you can take a look at those sheets on things you need to know for the final. Or in without that, I'll just go through things I think are interesting or important. Uh, today we're going to talk about how we can use creation to do volume. Yes, David. So I don't want to interrupt, but will we be able to go over homework? Today? Absolutely. If you'd like to go over homework, problem. Okay, would you do me the favor of writing it on the board? No. something, in some cases, a little, a little exotic, a little dangerous, you could say B equals, you could say, the ln of B equals U. Each of these has a advantages, disadvantages, they might not all work. But when doing intervals like this, you want to use a little intuition. Want to think about how might might I be able to simplify this, make it work, and you got to try it. And you know, waste a little. You know, sorry, waste that precious resource, paper. Unless you're good at like doing this right into a editor. I've gotten used to, you can do that, I've done that. That's how I did all the, there'll be a homework sheet that shows how to do all these that I'm going to post probably later today. Uh, I'm trying to think of things I want to say before I just launch into it. So, uh, and, and more than one of these may work. It's entirely possible, it's kind of likely. Uh, 
why I chose that. That becomes P to the log. We haven't figured out what to do with this guy, but well, that's just b over one minus b. That might work. That might be good. I don't know. Uh, oh, that's the same as this. Huh. I haven't really thought of that. Is there any other way to go about this? Well. You have to kind of get an intuition for what's worked in the past and try it. And if it doesn't work, we go back to square one and try something else. So uh, I have really, having done a lot of these, I have really good intuition that you might not come too much away. I think this is probably the right direction. Uh, dv equal to negative e to the u. Where's the wrong letter here? du. Uh, yeah, never let the letters get in the way. I mean, you can always, since these are, this is, u is a dummy, you could write this x over 1 minus e to the x dx. It'll be fine. Yes. Sorry, I made a mistake. The bottom is square. More so now because this is square. All right, so uh, the usual problem with these things is, you know, kind of making this work. Well, it looks like. Change this a little. Let's make it negative e to the e u e u e u squared. Right? Agree these are the same. We just have two minuses. So now I can go ahead and do my substitution. So I get minus up here. I have minus. No, I'm just going to have dv. I've got a minus here and a minus here. And below, well, 1 minus e to u, that's e squared. And you might, you might prefer I write it. argument for that is this is just notation, it's not a quantity. Okay, well this is this is looking pretty straightforward now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rewrite this as b to the minus 2 because it's, it's always easier in my head to do the, the uh, reverse power rule. We have it looking like this. So I get minus e to the minus 1 over minus 1. Oh. No. No. Integral 
equal sign plus c. Well, that looks too convenient. Yet, yeah. looks like these cancel. So, uh, taking advantage of my nice long board here, this is 1 over z, so it would be 1 over 1 minus e to the u plus a constant. All right. Uh, Sometimes I'm just happy with the result that it feels right and I'm ready to move on. But here I do feel a little uncomfortable. I want to I check my work here. I'm going to write this as 1 minus e to the u minus 1 plus c. I want to find the derivative. So I know this is going to be 1 minus e to the u minus 2, subtract 1 using the power rule, and I multiply it by the derivative here, which is going to be minus e to the u. Writing this, I have two minuses, good. Got EU on top. This goes down below, it's negative. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Sometimes it's easier to do the differentiation than the integration, and so it's a great check. Sometimes it's harder, actually. When you make the mistake over here, and then you have to go find it. Okay. Uh, any, any questions? Any other homework problems? Question on this actually. Can you just go over again how you get from like the first step, basically how you go from the uh, substitution. The substitution. Okay. So I start with this, and I guess it's a guess. What do I want to substitute? I want my 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 v to be one minus u to the e, one minus e to the u, and I want to because I need a du here. I, I find the derivative of both sides. I, I, I grant you this is a little tortured, but it's just syntax. I, I guess I could write it dv d u v my uh, dv d u one minus d v u. What do I get here? Just get one. Just get. No, that's not fair. That's not a good way to do it. I'm trying to wait, figure out a way to parse the, the I syntax. Can, I can see that. Yeah. All right, but but I, I see here I've got a negative e to the u du, and I don't see that negative here. So I manufacture it. Put it here, but then to compensate, I need a minus here. So that gives me this, and and in particular, negative e to the u du. That's that's going to be by my, that's going to become my dv. Here, I end up with. Well, I plug in, so 
I get b squared on the bottom, b to the minus 2 to bump the line. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, I have another initial question too, actually. From, um, Sorry? I, I have another question too, if I may. Oh, sure. On a different problem? Yes. Okay. Would you do me the honor of taking on the board? Anyone? Here is trigonometry. Trigonometry. Right, that was my question about sixty, but the magic books and pi over three. Now I was trying to work out. We're gonna, we're gonna get there. Six times four is 
pi minus two thirds pi or three. Look for the different answer. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I was considering when trade and then just putting my calculator. Yeah, uh, it's um <laughs> that's the uh, the tragedy of this class. It's not really a tragedy. It's just you know we, we talk about how in math it kind of builds, and it's really hard to get through algebra if you don't know fractions, and it's hard to get through algebra two if you don't know algebra one and so forth. In calculus, it really you know, bites you in the butt. The basics aren't aren't all there. Any other homework questions? Okay. So back to volume. One way to think of this is, well, breaking it up into little slices, like slices of bread. And we just kind of add them all up. Well, at this point, we already know that the slice of bread is just this delta x. Add up all the delta x's. Get L, and that's how we get the volume of a brick or a parallel pipe. Well, what if we started with something a little different? Weird shape. We take that and
could still, now that we you know integration and calculus, we could kind of slice this up into pieces. axis here, y, z. And, uh, and if I have some function, some area function, which describes the area here in respect to x, then we can sum these up, again, using smaller and smaller slices. And you know, from some point A to B, and that becomes our volume. So there's there's something something kind of obvious and subtle going on here. We've really transformed this question about volume into a question of area. You think we had some function, we'll call it area of x. We have some, we already know how to find this area using an integral, and that's just what we do, but yet we've turned this into now three dimensions. We could do it with four dimensions, or five, you know. Uh, we are a little restricted here in that, you know, here we have an area function and then just x. You might wonder, well, what if, what if things are varying not just along the x-axis? Hope you're curious about that. But you'll have to wait for count three to actually address that problem. You're going in that direction. Okay, so that's the strategy. Uh, let's let's do something with this. First, let's do something that I don't know. You may some of you, <laughs> maybe one of you, has always wanted to know. Is what about what about the volume of a sphere? the area of a circle using breaking it up into little you know, pie slices. But this, that's, that's not so obvious. So let's set up our sphere as follows. This is a great circle. It's got radius r. And have to imagine it. The circle okay. extends outward. So some some x here we have. This will help any. We have a slice of this sphere, which is itself a circle. Think about well, we want an area function, right? Area of the circle along here. So we want to know the radius, which happens to be x. This x distance. Well, I'm sorry, it's y. This is x. And I'm going to use big R because that's what I use for my notes, big R for the radius. This is a constant. So we have big R. We have our x that we're going to we want to integrate over from where? A bar to R. And 
And now we just need to know what this area function is with respect to x. Well, what can we say about this? Looks like x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's just the Pythagorean theorem on this right triangle. And it's this y here we want to know, because that's the radius of our circle. So y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. But that's just the radius. If given this radius, what is the area function? Well, it's pi r squared. Pi times the square root of r squared minus x squared squared. All right, so now, now we're ready to actually calculate the volume of the sphere. It'll be this integral from negative r to r of the pi outside for the moment, r squared minus x squared dx. Now that looks, that looks, that looks pretty straightforward. Pi r squared is a constant, so it's going to be r squared x minus x squared. Well, that's just our reverse power rule. Negative r to r. Okay, what's that going to be? Pi times. Um, r cubed minus r cubed over 3. That's the first part. Minus, now we have to plug in needed to know to find the volume of the sphere with some calculus. And I remember them teaching us this second year of high school geometry. It's kind of a long, a long time to have faith in uh, a math teachers. Alright, and, and any Anybody amazed that it was just that straightforward? Maybe it wasn't that straightforward. Right. Well, I'll leave this up. since geometry. I have another one. 
Can you just tell me the volume of a cone? Would be a lot more exciting. Well, start a little slower. Say we have a pyramid facing side S. So the area is squared by H. I know the volume of the pyramid. Yep. One over three. Times S squared. One over H? No. Yeah. 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 Um, are you the same type? Hmm? Well, base time type. So, base time type times S squared. Right? One base, half. Base time type is S squared, yeah. And then. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not base time type. Base times height would be S squared H. So H, H over 2? There you go. Over 2. That would be for a triangle. Over 4. It's 3. Yeah. It's the same thing here. It's uh, pi R squared, or R is the radius of the base, times height over 3. All right, well. See if we can uh, formulate that in terms of uh, calculus. So <laughs> the idea is we have a, we have a triangle here, where this side is a diameter cone. Again, you know, we're, we're going to integrate from 0 to h the area of this uh, cone. So we need to figure out an area function here. Well, if we could find r, we'd be good, right? Yes, I'm going to. We redraw this a little cleaner. So here's x. Oh, this is little r. I guess the base we have the big r that we're going to use. It's this big r here. Hmm. Well. Now this distance is h. You know this distance is r. And our little r, the radius, is going to move with x. We can get by using the fact that these are similar triangles. They have the same shape, so their sides have or in the same proportion. So r over x. Big R over H, or little r is R X H. 
Well, that's the radius along here. Area of the cone has to be with respect to the it has to be pi r squared. So pi to the r over x over h squared. So let's let's plug that in over here. Zero to h. Again, I'm going to put the pi outside. Constant. R squared, x squared, h squared, x. Now we have a problem we want to deal with. Because we know how to find the antiderivative of x squared. Which is going to be pi times r squared, x cubed over 3, h squared. Simplify this. H cubed over h squared is just a, so pi r squared h over 3. And that's the volume of our Let's, let's, let's try something that isn't, isn't something we know. Falling is symptomatic of something you'll you take count two, you'll end up doing a lot of. Let's take the function f of x equals square root of x. Kind of looks like this. And let's, this is the x-axis, let's spin it around the x-axis and make some kind of solid we probably not run into before. It's kind of a, it's a paraboloid. But you know, paraboloids go on forever. We only want to you know, look from zero to some distance h. It's going to be our volume. And since y equals square root of x. We already know how to find the area of this circle that we're integrating across here. Pi r squared would just be pi x. So this turns out to be a particularly easy integration. It's going to be x squared over 2. from 0 to h, or pi h, pi h squared over 2. There we go. So we have a paraboloid of height h. Now you know the, now you know the volume of it.
I'm going to finish up with one more of these problems, a little more complicated. Uh, you needn't you need worry about this, this, I hate to say this, won't be on the exam. Uh, but uh, then after, after the break, we're going we're gonna to use this and we're going we're gonna to find to me one of those moments in mathematics where you might be astonished. I was astonished. It's like, what? How can that be? It's coming up. Uh, but a typical problem might go like this. Two equations, y equals functions, y equals x, and y equals x squared. So y equals x, y equals x squared. And what we want is we want to spin this thing around the x-axis here. I guess you have to use a little imagination. We're going to take this section, spin it around, and find its volume. In engineering, you might need to do something like this. Make this like it's just, just kind of a weird stopper in a bottle. Uh, all right, so how do you do that? Well, the good news is we know how far to integrate, right? You integrate from zero to well, where do these meet? Pretty obvious to be one. And so we just need to find this area function. Well, you'll recall that we, if we look at this idea of area between curves. But in this case, we, we don't have to think of it that way. We can think of it more this way. Here we have, we have a cone. Where we have these circles. And here, we're going to have inside of it another piece that we're going to subtract out. It's like if you had a machining system, you First, carve down your cone, and you go inside and carve out the rest somehow. Now, have you ever thought of this before? Short digression. A couple years ago, I was doing uh, some work for a medical robotics company. Uh, their robot, you know, it's a big, big machine, kind of an arm, and another arm, and another arm, and another arm, and a drill. <laughs> and uh, the robot controlled this arm, figured out where the drill, had to figure out mathematically where the drill was all the time. What were they doing? Well, there was a bone. This was a thigh bone. You have a patient up on a table, surgically opened up. And the drill would come in and drill exactly the, the right shape into the bone. So they could put in a prosthetic your hip bone, you know, has kind of a ball and socket. And they had a they had a robot doing it. It was great. It's 
instead of like searching, having to go in and carefully figure this out and have something mechanical really. But as you can imagine, it, you got to get the math right. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, I was total, total fluke. How do we, how do we get this? Well, we've got a big circle. Again. Uh, There's y, there's x, but since x equals y, this is also x. So that's uh, i x squared, and this is the this is the circle we're gonna subtract out. So y equals x squared. Simple enough integration. I do that later around. There's nothing, nothing magical about the answer. Just some fraction times pi. All right. Well, uh, we're going to break, and then we'll come back. And if you're not amazed, you get your money back. Once we know, you know, out to some a, we'll look at the limit as a goes to infinity. So we can do this in two parts. All right, let's look at the first part. Actually, not all that difficult. This is just uh, the antiderivative of pi over x squared, let's take the pi out, so that's x to the minus 2, so it's going to be x to the minus 1 over minus 1 over minus x, and we want to go from a to 1. Right, so what's 
got pi times negative 1 over a minus negative 1 over 1. Well, that's positive. So what do we get? We get a times 1 minus 1 over a. But as I said, we can just take the limit as a goes to infinity. infinitely long, its volume is finite. It's kind of, we've seen things like that before. Uh, one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth. An infinite sequence, but yet it's equal to two. Or if you like, the limit as the number of terms is greater and greater. Construct function one over x from one to infinity. We're going to again spin it around the x-axis, so we have a two. This time, what we want to know is what the surface area outside this tube is. Hmm. Well, that's a little different. Instead of having like an area function here, we want to think of the area on this surface. And if it helps, you can think of this little width here as like the delta x or in the limit the dx. So let's see how would we do that. Again, uh, we want to go to infinity, but let's just start off from 1 to some a. And let's think about the area of this little guy. Well, again, it's 1 over x. is the radius. So the circumference here has to be 2 pi over x. And then that little width there is the dx. Okay, this, this doesn't look that hard either, does it? Um, I take the 2 pi outside, just a constant. And What's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Oh, ln. ln. Now we could put absolute value signs, but since all our numbers are positive, we don't need to. So 1 to a. So what do we get here? We get Two pi ln of a minus two pi ln of one, which is just zero. But we 
have to find the limit as a goes to infinity of this result. What's the limit as limit of a goes to infinity? Five here, so you're saying maybe it's one. Let's let's give it a try. So ln of e would be one, right? So ln of e squared would be two. Websites rate your teachers. And you actually go in. For all, all, all your, for all your classes, there's some place where you give feedback. And good or bad, please rate your teachers, including me. Uh, I don't know. Anybody has any questions or wants to talk about something? You know. Math, physics, economics, whatever, or not. Well done today. All right, well, thank you. Again, Thursday, we're just going to review, bring in any problems, questions you have. Uh, 
you don't have to. I'll just start at the beginning of those sheets and go through subjects and write some intelligent comments. Uh, and then there we have a final a week from Tuesday, isn't it? Or today? Oh, it's a week from today. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, you know, the usual advice, get a good night's sleep before the exam. I don't see you. And uh, study, but you know, don't stay up all night. It's not going to help you. And do your best. So thank you.